الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر إلا الحمد إن الحمد لله لا نداع All praise, thanks, gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what does that mean? All praise and thanks belong to Allah. Here it is. I'm going to give you tons of examples. Whenever I say this, the question is, what does that mean? Okay. نحمده و نستعينه و نستعينه و نحمده و نتوكل عليه و نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا و من سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا يغفر الله و من يغفر فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. هي جاءت إن شاء الله. Let's start with this. Allah says in the Quran, يا أيها الذين آمنوا أو بليفرز اتقوا الله اتقوا الله. What does that mean? Be aware of Allah. Have consciousness of Allah. Make sure Allah's presence, you feel it all the time. Not to disappoint Him. The way He deserves it. And then no circumstance. Don't you dare forget this what we just said. Don't you dare. It's a very strong language. Unless in a full state of submission. Okay. Alhamdulillah. In order to understand how we thank and praise Allah, and what is the significance of this day, which is a day of celebration, we have to go back a recap of what happened the last month. We got to do a recap. In order to do a recap, you have to understand one thing. What is Ar-Rahman? What is Ar-Rahman? Allah introduces Himself by that name. Often translated as mercy, merciful, compassionate. It really does injustice to the name of Ar-Rahman. Let me give you by way of example. Ar-Rahman, to really loosely translate it, is the kind of mercy you cannot imagine. The kind of mercy is happening right now. The kind of mercy is perpetual, is everlasting. You just can't imagine it whatsoever. It's a tsunami of mercy is coming and hitting you right in the face. You cannot avoid it. The way it happened, we had a month, regardless of 29 days, regardless of 30 days, it doesn't matter. Allah said, I am Ar-Rahman. And He said, you need to be thankful to me, praise me, and thank me. For what? I'll give you 10 days of mercy. Non-stop mercy. You cannot stop it. You be the man, you be the woman. To collect as much as you can collect. Go on. It is up to you. Allah says it is not going to stop. For that we say Alhamdulillah. And I pray to Allah for me and you that Allah has actually made you to be a recipient of that mercy. Then Allah says, whatever you have done for the past year, whatever wrongful thing you have done, that means you looked at something you're not supposed to look. You said something you're not supposed to say. You were sarcastic in your remarks constantly. You were mean. You did not apply justice to yourself and to anyone else. <coughs> all the hurtful things you said to your siblings, to your brother, to your mom, to your dad, all the nasty things you texted for the past year, Allah said, I'm going to forgive it all. I give you the middle 10 days, as long as you can sin with sincerity to me, clean slate, you are forgiven. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are the recipient of that and all of us are the recipient of that complete forgiveness. Imagine if something is completely clean slate and you have to restart, which is how often do you get the chance? How often do you get the chance of life? For that, you say, Alhamdulillah, that's the meaning of Alhamdulillah. Allah, praise and thanks belong to you for giving me this opportunity. And on top of it, I sing on a cake as I call it multiple times. SubhanAllah, the last 10 days. Hmm, you can't imagine. You cannot imagine. Let me tell you this. When Allah tells you, hellfire is forbidden on you, to you, what does that mean? What does that mean? If you can't go to the hellfire, where else are you going to go? 
The only other place is what? The final abode. The place that we're all trying to get to. That's what it was. And Allah said, the last 10 days, you got it. You got it. You and I, I said that in a couple of weeks ago, the most sought after property, right now on this land, on this earth that you and I live, the most sought after property is waterfront property, the beach property. If you place, you have a house in there, you rent a house in there, you made it. You're on top of that house. You're on the lead. You're, you made it. Allah said to you, that is one incentive for you. Jannat in taji in tahtiha al anhar. How many times have you read that in the Quran? What does that really mean? You have your own mansion in a waterfront property. The waterfall is yours alone and going underneath your wall, your house. I don't know, I don't know how that's going to be. I can't imagine it. Allah's giving you one incentive. That's what you're going to get. That is what you're going to get. On top of it, opportunity of a lifetime that you and I have to seek opportunity of a lifetime on that one night, the night of decree, the night of poverty. These are the incentives Allah gave you and I. And for that, we say, Alhamdulillah. And for that, we say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. What does that mean? You came here for a purpose. You came with some baggage with you. You came with worries. You came with things that is not right for you. You have stress. You have um, bills to pay. You got to battle with a kid's college. You got to battle with a sasso. Whatever is your problem, you are saying this today. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than all my issues. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than all my issues. And you declare this because Allah said so in the Quran. When you come to this day, if you're celebrating you and I, you declare His greatness. When you come to Allah, Allah ma halakum in the Quran it comes, and that's why you say this. And on top of it, you say La ilaha illallah. There's absolutely under no circumstance anyone can help you except Allah. There's no one can give you gift except Allah. There's no one is on your side 24-7 except Allah. For that reason and that reason alone, you declare absolutely there's no way anyone is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you say, Allahu Akbar, I swear that Allah is greater than anything. Wallahu Akbar, you declare that again. Wallahu Akbar, and for all these reasons, Ya Allah, for you and you only is belonging with praise and thanks to Allah. No one else. That's what you're praising here. That's what you're celebrating. The month that you went, the headaches that you went, the coffee that you gave up, all the interest that you gave up. Why? What was the reason for that? You are built up two things. You have the body. Physical body, and what makes you you is what is inside you which you cannot see. You are starving one aspect of you, and you are strengthening the other aspect of you. That is the entire essence of Ramadan. What is the thing inside you that you cannot see? It's called a ruh. Ruh is translated as spirit. Spirit is nur, is light. The only way you can feed light with light is Al-Qur'an, because that's what Allah says, the Qur'an is light. You have to strengthen that. The way you do it is, Allah said, this month that you passed was about Qur'an, about coming close to Allah. Allah extended, say, I want to have a relationship with you. And you did. 29 days, 30 days you did it. For that, you should be joyous. For that, you should be happy. For that, you, t- you declare the greatness of Allah by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. That is the day to be, to be joyous. That is the celebration of today. That you went through this and you helped yourself. You helped yourself. Be happy. Say Alhamdulillah. Akul khali sakhullahi wa sakhruhni wa huwa wa huwa.
ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The month came with a tons of stuff. You couldn't stop it. You had to go out and collect as much as you could. Collect as much rewards as you could collect. Opportunity gone. That's gone. Because Allah said He will reward those who came with a belief in this month, with a righteous belief. He will reward according to Himself, however He wanted it. That's all. Opportunity is gone. And may Allah has given you all the fullest, fullest reward. However, there's one more thing still remaining with you and I. One more thing. Two more things are still remaining with you and I. You know, when I was sitting in your seat some years ago, whenever the Imam would come here and say, Brothers and sisters, Allah is telling you to do another six days. I was like, come on, give me a break. It's just a 30 days, man. Another six days. Come on. They would never explain what that is. They would never explain what that is. Like, do six more days. Well, do six more days if you can. Optional. You just went through a training. 30 days, 29 days of training. You, 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 you want to carry this lesson somehow. You know what is the worst thing? I'm going to be real with you guys. You know what is the worst thing could happen to you and I? We went through this exercise of hunger and thirst. Put it in the back burner. Give it away. Wait until the next year. And you learn nothing out of it. It's like the training they send me from work. I go for uh, one week of training. When I come back, they're like, you want to train? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. Cool. That's it. I don't apply it. I don't apply it. It's just they have to do something, they have to have a budget, they have to send the money and they send you somewhere. That is why the worst thing could happen if you haven't learned anything. You're strengthening your spirit, your room. Allah is giving you another six days of opportunities to do this, to do that, to carry this forward in a, in a, in a, in a fashion. But the other opportunity that still exists from today onward and every single day is this. You get the minimum. Remember in Ramadan, the amount of rewards? You couldn't count. You just could not count how much it was. But the, there's a calculation here. The minimum you're going to get 1 for 10. Return on investment. You do it once, you get 10. You spend a dollar, you get 10 bucks. I don't want you to spend a dollar. If you do it once, you get 10. Minimum, it could be multiples of 7. 70. Multiples of 100. 70, 700, 7, 7,000, 7, 700,000. Whatever it could be, and that's how it comes from Hadith. What am I talking about? Like, what is he talking about? Oh, here it is. In Allah, without a doubt, Allah, the Creator Himself, and all the angelic parts, you can't imagine how many. They do one thing and one thing only on a constant basis, not like you and I, whatever they are, constant basis. What do they do? They send salutations and peace and blessings to our beloved Prophet. Ya Allahumma Alaihi Amin. Oh, believers, all of you. Do the same thing. Sallu alayhi wa sallu taseema. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka habili majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka habili majid. Now, here's the return on investment. You say it once, you get 10 rewards. You say it once, minimum 10 rewards. You say it once, minimum 10 rewards. If you are feeling the, if you actually feel it, you know, sometimes you really feel things right there. Allah is going to want to live by 7,000, 7,000, 7 million. It's up to Him. That is still yours. Don't give it up. Keep on sending salutations to the Prophet. And we end with this. In Allah, Yahu bil Adl, wal Ihsan, wa Ida'i bil Qurga. Allah is commanding you on three things that gives you success. With the other, be just with all the things that you do, with your limbs, with your thoughts, with your approach in life. What I said, and don't be satisfied with status quo. Elevate yourself constantly to a better place. Learn more. And that was that month to teach you how to learn better, how to make yourself better. If you're a C student, make yourself a B student. If you learn a little bit in your coding, become another coder. Whatever you do, become better. And start with your own family. Bring that love, bring that connection, bring that sense of belonging, bring that respect with your own family. And as flip side of the token, Allah tells you, if you want to be successful, avoid these three things. 
Why am I not fact check? All sorts of shamelessness. All kinds of shamelessness. What Munkar? Don't put, don't put the shame in Google. Munkar is shame in Google. Anytime that you want something, you don't like it. You have a rather really think of this. Uh, I don't know, my humble opinion, what I have heard. Okay, you know there's differences of opinion somewhere else. You try to look for something else that is not applicable to you and your situation. Don't do that. And oppression. Oppression is also the part of the shapes of parts. Alhamdulillah. I need to go back to all of you on behalf of my beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter sitting somewhere in the background and my two handsome boys. I call upon Eid Mubarak to all of you. Eid Mubarak and go and enjoy your day. Assalamu alaikum.